Welcome to the Art Critique. So today I'm thinking about a map. Uh, let's go for. Uh, how do you spell payload race? It's one of the payload raid maps. High tower. Uh, it's not PL High Tower. Uh, ah, that's because maybe this map PL High Tower. No Hassel Castle PLR. Ah, it's PLR. I was just uh, writing things wrong. Okay, map uh, Race High Tower. So uh, disclaimers as usual. This is not a game design discussion per se, I'm just gonna uh, dive a little bit into it sometimes, but this is more an art discussion. And uh, this art critique is gonna follow Feldman's method, four steps, description, analysis, interpretation and judgment. I'm gonna describe what I see on the description, I'm gonna talk about the elements of art and the analysis, I'm gonna interpret the creative vision on the interpretation, and on the judgment step, I'm gonna count this successful or unsuccessful art. So, yeah. Uh, when the map loads, we will begin. Welcome to Forever Show. Just uh, click this one, I guess. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, let us begin them. Description, what do I see? We're in some sort of garage, right? We have the lockers with medical supplies and ammo. And the open lockers here, the scale, the scale benches, towels. And over here, these machines and devices. Is that a fax machine? Oop. Clocks, computers, stations, desks, stuff. Uh, poster, tires. Stuff that you usually see on the Team Fortress 2 map, right? On the spawn room when we exit it. Uh, what else? There's a door here. More tires, a gas canister, I think. I don't know. Yes, gasoline. Battlements, a sign up there. We go here, there's uh, some windows. There's some stairs. We're in some sort of uh, complex, right? I don't know what this is. Again, tire. Okay, so barrels in this one has a. Skull on it, press supply, and blue industries incorporated boxes. There's this grid here, pickups. Ah, much like yesterday, sorry, much like I'm gonna be considering the pickups and the payload as part of the map. This job has worked zero days without an accident. A little warning, not a warning, right? Today, I don't know, communication side. Barrels, the glass window, star, another window here. And then we, here we have train tracks. Visit the lost continents, another advertisement. Brain, 100% brain quality, cool. Over here, okay, things get a little more interesting. There is, well, all these buildings around us, more crates and barrels here, a barrel. Uh, there is this whole, we are on some sort of wooden platform with all these metal plates lining the walls of these, these structures. Very, a lot of, kind of a makeshift structure, right, when you look at it. Uh, here this is some sort of elevator, right? In game it goes up as far as I remember when the payload gets here. And there is like Capture zone sign, a card uh, symbol up there. There's this whole grid and structure thing. There's a satellite antenna up there. Or is it just, is it just an antenna? I don't know. Uh, there is something up here? What's this exactly? Not sure. But it's there. <laughs> Some sort of uh, illuminating device, maybe? I don't know. Oh, would you look at that? There is a very small patch of earth with some vegetation here. Or they cultivating a uh, small garden here or something. So here, that's nice. Uh, when we go here inside this 
corridor, I guess, or get into the displays. And, uh, okay. When you got here, this is the bomb. We all know and love. It's a bomb on a cart. Behind it, there is this bunch of ammo and metal and stuff being stored behind it. Keep out, the shutter door. Uh, what else? Rio Grande, Coco. Cactus, cacti. Some rocks, anything else for me to describe? Uh, the pickups, the health pack, and the ammo box. The health pack looks much like a lunch bag, but probably inside we have like bandages and whatnot. Read the shoe. Oh, what's this? This is a horseshoe, right? Horseshoes. Uh, red on a red wall. Over there, blue. Okay, I guess it was a thing of the which map, which side of the map we were on. Uh, whoops, let me go here. Yeah, because over here things are the walls are not lined with metal anymore. They're basically a bunch of wooden planks. What else? Uh, and there are two sets of elevators. Makes sense. Uh, here, similar geometry, right? It's symmetrical. Oh, though we still have metal here, I guess. Anything else? Red barn, I guess. This is the red barn, apparently. Speed limit 15. This is the red team spawn. Symmetrical stuff, right? Also advertisement, crates, grids. This window, stuff like that. Uh, oh, a milk can. Anything else for me to describe? I guess it's just about going to places we haven't been yet, right? Garage. Uh, Sender is BBQ. Wholesome. Fam what? Famous? Sender is BBQ. Zip it below, more advertisements. There's the set of stairs. What's this? Run for Australian Mother Load. Transformative, extraordinary, the modern element. The Manco guided transit. Part Conveyance, Badlands, Thursday, December 19th, 1850. Outpace the world! Master the entire spectrum of the mustache sciences. $50 due upon safe passage. Oh, okay. War! <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. There is that, and also you can naturally take this set of stairs to climb and get inside this structure. This is what we call the high tower that gives name to the map, right? It's a tower and it's high, high tower. Uh, we can move inside of it and what else? Basically it. Uh, oops, I heard it again. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> whatever. And I think the only part misses uh, is that house over there. Or let's check there to see if it, there's anything else to describe. Watch us that. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Here is actually something interesting. We have like a canyon here. Uh, also, clouds in the sky. Some smoke being produced there. Red, red. I guess we can also take this route inside of these spawns with this uh, kind of door. The supply. Du, 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 du. Oops. And uh, what else? And we got this. And here we have another weird structure thing. We can get inside it. It's all like unsafe, I would say. Possibly on both sides of it. Mm, anything else to describe here? I don't think so, right? I think this is a more or less complete description. Imperial mine, no trespassing. So, uh, yeah. yeah, anything else? I guess there's a bunch of vegetation here on the ground. I hadn't realized, but there are like this blue detail things to communicate which track are we looking at the red thing track or the blue thing rail track 
Amazing. Uh, so yeah, but I think I have described everything in general, right? So just out of curiosity, this is the blue team's bomb, and it goes right here, and uh, goes to the back of everybody. It's closer to the red team spawn, interestingly, and we come here. I see. Hmm. Okay. So anyway, uh, that was it for the description. Ah, I guess there is some sort of pipe here. Let's move on to the analysis now, where I'm going to talk about the elements of art. I'm going to be considering eight for this art critique. Points, lines, shapes, forms, space, texture, color and value. So let's begin with points. Let's see if we can find any points here that were used in the artwork. I'm not sure we should consider these as points, probably not, probably this, this makes more sense to talk about this as uh, for the forms of the bank, of the bench. What else? Points, points, points. Similar thing here with this like damage texture of the wall, but with the element of texture. Classic stuff. Um, 1442. There wouldn't happen to be any points here on the artwork here, right? Only some again degraded texture kind of thing. Let's see. It's I think the from what I've seen on the map, it's mostly gonna be textures usually. Whenever I see something that could be a point, like here. Uh, I don't know. Should I consider these like textures? Let's consider these as points. I don't know. Maybe it's fine. Uh, what else? So basically, uh, all these like nailed parts on the on this machine thing, I guess. Anywhere else where I would say I would see points or any on the payload itself. Here, may, yeah, maybe this also. Again, some sort of nails or or screws, probably nails. Uh, nothing here. Again, I don't think it's impossible to see points here, but this is probably easier to talk about the textures. I don't think there are any other points, probably. That's not closer to a texture. Uh, don't know. Did I see something here right now? Uh, no Again, probably makes more sense to call these as textures, or like, it's like scraped off textures, or stuff like that uh, on the cactus is there any again textures apparently yeah i think i think this will be it uh, unless there's something unexpected like over here for example yeah no okay so the points that i have found both are on the bombs and on the that the machines up there they basically refer to some nails or screws used to tie to tie up parts of the of the payload together and the machine together both machines right probably yeah okay uh, the points are all in black they are what else mostly and then they are all regular I guess somewhat regularly spaced and something similar here, they kind of follow a pattern. So I guess that's it, that's my analysis on the points. Let's talk about lines now. So for lines, again, I gotta be, be careful. Is there some lines here? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, obviously we can kind of make out that it's about an intersection of metal plates. So we could talk about this more like farms, I believe. Or as farms, yeah, I guess. Or farms, or space. I think both are uh, options here. For here, this part here, I think ties very well to like uh, woody textures. So I'm not sure. Can 
I find a simpler use of lines here that's easier to digest, let's say. Uh, over here, no lines whatsoever. Uh, what about here? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I think the lines are always mostly textures or space or forms. So let's just move on to the next element then, I guess. Because if it's not those scenarios, then I don't see lines. Stuff like... Uh, here? Is, is it a good example? Let me see. Yeah, okay, okay, this is a good enough example, I would say. Like, there is left side and right side, but there is no line in the middle, right? Because how, how thick it is? It is. <laughs> if there even is a line in... There is none, I believe. For example, and that kind of aesthetical choice is pretty common in many parts of the map. So, yeah. Is it there? I land this? In this one? No, I still think not. Anyway, uh, so let's talk about shapes now. Uh, for the shapes of this map, we see a lot of buildings first and foremost, right? So, and a lot of roofed buildings. So I'm just uh, including the middle one over there. That com that makes out for a lot of uh, trapezoidal shapes and rectangular ones. Maybe squarish ones also. Uh, squarish, rectangular, trapezoidal shapes. What else? How many? Just so many of it. How many parts of the structure? The walls. Inside the corridors. Less, I guess, but still, sometimes there's gonna be some. What else? Oh, there's a barrel window there. Cool. So, and I might as well talk about the shapes of the cactus, because they are pretty unique. These, like, thin shapes with the very long protuberances, you know, classic cactus stuff. Medic by accident. So they are pretty unique and meaningful. We have some very thin and sharp pointed shapes for the grass. Some uh, irregular for, for shapes for the rocks here. Like, uh, I, I don't think it's fair to call these geometrical. They're just like irregular. Although lacking curvature, there is a lot of like straightness to this the shapes of the rocks here, even though they're not geometrical per se. What else? Uh, hexagons for, and squares for boxes, for example. Hexagon, if you, the, basically considering the, considering the angle you look at it, like like this is like one, two, three, four, five, six sides, so hexagon. Not a regular hexagon, but still hexagon. And uh, in the distance here on the canyon, more of those somewhat similar shapes of the rocks. Again, not something geometrical, but with a lot of straightness to it. Very interesting. Anything else? Poseidon, uh, rectangular squares, the cactus with the long and protuberant shapes. I guess there is this tap here. Uh, what else? There is a narrow sign there, so that's also some unique shapes for us. These machine parts are also trapezoidal shapes, to give off that as well. Uh, well, do they actually? Depends on the angle, I guess. And this... Okay, uh, maybe I'm wrong actually, because this would be a pentagon. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this would be a very uh, irregular pentagon. Hex uh, trapezoidal, I believe they are always four sided. I don't know. And if we would look through another angle, it would be something like one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a heptagon. Depending on the angle, amazing. So we have that on these parts here. And not sure if any other. How many other shapes? <sighs> ok, 
have that inside. The barrels have her tumbler shapes, which like the, the number of the buildings. Uh, 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 the buildings, as I said, have rectangular like and trapezoidal like shapes. Trapezoidal shapes. So there is that. Uh, I don't know, I think that's it, right? Let's move on to the farms. Shapes are always should in art critique, shapes are always should be, and farms are always three dimensional. So, for the farms of this map here, a lot of prisms and blocks for the buildings, that's noticeable. Uh, we have this like boxy structure for the farms. Uh, again, something irregular, hard to define with the rocks for their farms. Still maintaining a certain degree of flatness before it was straightness on the shapes, but on the farm flatness. Uh, this is kind of a middle ground between something with curvature and something without curvature, I would say. I don't know. For the cacti, cacti uh, somewhat cylindrical ish farms with the protuberances. Well, not exactly because of the tip of it, but something like that. Uh, you can just say cactus farm if you want farms if you want to. I think it's good enough. What else? I already mentioned blocky shapes, farms, <laughs> blocky farms for the boxes. Anything else? So the antenna has like a flat curved disc, right? And a bunch of thin tubes and beams and stuff. And uh, other, other than all of that, uh, I think that's it. The grass, the vegetation has barely any farm, they are so flat. Uh, I think that's mostly it. Prisms, blocks, cacti, this rock thing shape. Sco the block, uh, animation boxes. Yeah, we already heard that. I guess the, the clouds also have some uh, three dimensionality to them, some forms to them. But it would be kind of something hard to define, right? So something cloudy let's say for lack of a better way to describe it like uh, something very hard to uh, looks very not solid you know but perhaps we could say anyway what else and yeah i guess that's it for the farms let's move on to space so the elements of space here ought to be interesting because it's used in so many ways we have like these more open areas in the middle of the map. Then we have like this vast, very generous space for the canyon, naturally, and the sky, I suppose. And then we have uh, tighter spots like this one, this kind of corridor. Although even here it's visually pretty generous. Some tightness on the details. Now here's a lot of tightness. This space here, this these uh, spaces on the construction work. What else? You know, stuff like this, the gap between those two rocks is a use of space, very very tight, but still is. So yeah, a lot of variety in the use of space, and uh, I already described where I see the different types of it. Also here, I guess, there is also somewhat open area. Very tight here between the ceiling, the tin can and the, and the barrel. Yeah, and I guess there is also some tight use of it between each wooden part of the rails. That's it for space. Let's talk about textures now. Textures, which is about the piercings of parts of the artwork. 
You see, for example, a lot of these woody textures of the layers of what? Uh, sap? Inside the sap would uh, follow inside the wood, maybe? I don't know if that's what happens exactly, but either way, the texture is like this. And also, as I said before, we have the metal plates, and so they give off this this painted texture, on some spots scraped painted texture, uh, and like on these parts on the edges of it, some sort of, again, scraped texture, the paint was scraped off, and with the angles, give a kind of a metallic feel, is it metallic? No, I would not say metallic, even though this is made out of metal, I would say this, this uh, things are give more of a wavy feel for textures. What else? Uh, I think there are some rusty textures here around the nails, the dots that represent the nails. Again, the paint, paint being scraped up or being eroded. Who are those? Uh, what else? If it's not. Ah, also the ground has this sand, sand like texture. If it's not that, uh, sometimes you see very small pebbles, although the bigger pebbles are closer to the elemental forms. What else? Uh, <sighs> on the bone, there is a few textures, I guess. But a bit subtler to see, they, they give off kind of a metallic vibe, I think. This one, do, I think they do. Uh, I'm not sure. What else? Again, there are rusty textures here. The tire has some sort of a dirty texture to it. Work on, te work on textures. What else? Let's look at the cacti. The cacti has this segmented pattern texture with uh, also some spikes and uh, the, the rock has also this this damaged slash sand like texture the rocks on the back on the uh, background on the distance also follow a bit of that although these rocks also have this very unique uh, like layered appearance for their textures uh, like those rocks these ones of the canyon have that which is a typical effect from erosion from like natural erosion wind and water possibly on other time on other ages you know in the geological history of this but in any case um, I'm not sure if there is any other texture for me to analyze already talked about the metal the wood the wood again, a lot of things made out of metal or wood. The, the rusty part. Uh, again, sand like for this part here of the supposed mini garden. Sand like and uh, alongside pebbles. color then. Uh, so just recap, uh, wood textures, rusty textures, the wave textures on the metal, scraped off paint of the paint texture, sand like textures, pattern textures and pointy ones also. Those are it, those are it in general. Uh, so color, let's talk about the element of color now. So I can actually play with like this cool. So here for example we see a lot of blue and grey. Blue on the walls, uh, painted on the metal sheets on the walls and grey on the floor. You know, we are on blue tin spawn and stuff like that. And, but when we exit the map then a lot of brown starts to show up, right? And, uh, and grey I guess. Uh, 
can see like on the many stairs and these platforms they are all in shades of brown I would say and on the tower itself a bunch of grey because of the metal used for the splits but also brown for the the, the, the planks barreling the windows and stuff what else uh, here again brown but it, is it a different shade of brown? A little bit. I think it's a red painted brown if you compare it to the brown of the staircase. I think this you can say this is, these woods are painted brown. Sorry, painted red. It's a red in spawn right inside of the map. Boxes with shades of beige, I guess. Uh, what else? A little small yellow thing. And over here, again, uh, some red painted uh, on the wood and some uh, grey, I guess. Yeah, I guess this is a shade of grey for the wood on the ground. Interesting. And anything else in the ground itself here has a shade of beige through a lot of parts, many parts of it. The rocks have some, uh, what, shade of white, maybe? Green on the cactus, anything else, and also blue and red on the payloads. Uh, what else? This shade of a blue, dark blue sky. I think that's mostly it for color. I think teal for the and white for the med, the health pack, and the gray for the smile pack. Yeah, a lot of it. A lot, so a lot of the beige, the gray and brown, and depending on the, which side of the map, there is a lot of blue, blue painted metal plates or red painted wooden planks. So that's it for color. Let's talk about um, what was it? Value, the last element of art for me to talk about. So value is about light and darkness, brightness and shadiness, so for example here you can make out there is a shadow here and there is a more illuminated part. Uh, over there also we have lamps here literally casting light on the inside. So let's see, I think the, there's some stuff that is class 1442 that's being followed, mild shadows, because you can still make out somewhat well the textures and details of the woods, even in this supposedly shadier part. So it's easy to notice the details of the wood. Uh, what else? And sometimes though, but not always, we see some intense brightness. Let's see if this would be a part of the map somewhere. There are many altercations between brightness and darkness now, but uh, what else? Warehouse. But I don't think I see any very notable brightness so anywhere. Um, maybe on that thing, but I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's and even if there is something like that, considering the author's presentation is a bit harder for us to look at it usually. Like think about the typical gameplay for this map. Let's see. That's how I'm interpreting it. Uh, warning hazard there. Like this would probably be the easiest angle to look at it, but it's a bit like out of the out of the action, right? So presentation really um, does not make, does not make it favorable to look at that part here, that uh, spot. Oh, I just realized if I compare it to the antenna, this is also some sort of antenna thing, right? Maybe. Just realized. Maybe. It's just a different kind of antenna. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but anyway. I don't think. So, mild shadows, mild uh, light. Also nothing too bright or intense. An altercation between them, and I don't think I see much else to analyze in terms of the of value, light and darkness. Like, 
Uh, I guess it's also following the geometry around it, communicating the shapes of the buildings a bit. Um, so I guess there is that. Some maps I think communicated more strongly, but I think the, this one is still doing it strongly enough, let's say. So, uh, some care for realism, that's how I would put it. Uh, okay, so that's it for the elements of art. Let's move on to the interpretation of the creative vision. Uh, so, first things first, begins with the, begin, let's begin with the basics. Uh, this was, was designed as an interpret as a map for Team Fortress 2. Uh, pretty reasonable interpretation, right? Considering everything, the context and stuff. The, the payloads also. Stuff like that. Uh, what else? There's a small health pack in a health pack and a medium health pack. So what else? Uh, I think uh, an iconic idea that I wanted for this map is the notion that you are in some sort of desert, like a number of the Dirty Fortress 2 maps. But like uh, considering the canyons over here and the color of them and their shapes and forms and how much that can call attention to your eyes the, on this part. Also, and in addition to the these rocks and the cactus, the cactus is a very easy giveaway, right? But also the rocks, I think, are not too far from it, so something feels familiar. Uh, yeah, I played on this map earlier today, but now I'm doing the art critique of it. So anyway, yeah. Uh, what else for my interpretation of the creative vision here? Uh, so, okay, a map for Team Fortress 2, the notion to make you feel like you are in some sort of desert, the canyon, the cacti, the rocks. What else should I interpret as part of the creative vision? Uh, ah, there is a name, of course, uh, this is the High Tower map. Uh, maybe there is this, like, unique building, piece of geometry in the middle of it, so very easy interpretation there, right? That this this tower should have some meanings, should be important, memorable. Uh, let's just say a, a tower, but I, I guess I'm already giving it away that we could say that this is the tower. The tower. Uh, so... Map for the uh, some sort of desert, to, for there to be a tower, to be meaningful, memorable, what else for the creative vision? Let's see, uh, there's so much gray and metal all around here. I find it very iconic. I, if really I say iconic, I'm not sure if I would call it iconic, but definitely very easy to notice. Like half of the map are covered in metal plates, and the buildings in the middle of it have all these metal plates in it, so. Okay, but the question is, would I interpret this as part of the creative vision, or maybe something that came later? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know, considering the other stuff, I'm not sure this was necessarily... The amount of grey and metal is necessarily tied to the creative vision. Because it kind of goes in a different direction than the ideas of desert, right? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, as I interpret, they just chose this color and this texture later. I don't think this was an important part for the design of the map. As I interpret it. Could be other mat some other material, some other texture. And so... It was an unimportant part of the creative vision because obviously at one point it was a part of the idea, right? But I don't. But I'm not gonna. That's why I, I, even the interpretation, I kind of broad stroke things. I don't go through every single detail because then I would have to talk about every single texture, for example, every single piece of geometry. So I'm just trying to focus on what's most important. And I don't think like the 
the metal was that important for the, for the original idea. So, as I interpret. Anything else I would add to the, my interpretation here? Uh, the original... Ah! Uh, okay, this is gonna be a little bit tied to, to be a map for Team Fortress 2. But thinking on the payload race game mode, the way this map goes is pretty like intertwined, right? It is symmetrical and intertwined, and uh, which works, I think, well for the payload race game mode, if we're gonna think about game design. But it seems to me does that like uh, symmetry and. Uh, Symmetry was an important part, I would say. You can compare that to maps like payload maps. Oh, normal payload, this is payload race, but normal payload maps are not symmetrical like at all, usually, right? Uh, some of them are, I think, like Thunder Mountain has a lot of symmetry to it, but many payload maps are not. Thunder Mountain, the last stage of Thunder Mountain is symmetrical, but many payload maps are not. And, uh, but I do feel like I interpret that symmetry is important for this one specifically. The way they have laid out a lot of stuff on the map and so on and so forth. The, as I said, the way it intertwines. So, but not the, specifically the f forms, shapes, and uh, I guess in the, on the use of color, right? Also because of the blue and red uh, duality the way that they have done it because again if you compare that with like for example Dust Bowl uh, yeah it's the blue team attacking the red team but uh, it's the map's not symmetrical they're, they're very far away from each other let's say right but in here it's, I think it's easier to contrast the red side and the blue side so yeah so that's gonna be my fourth idea for the vision so I think I'm gonna stop at that, so the four ideas will be to make a map for t for shoe, to make it uh, some sort of a desert, to uh, for the there will be some sort of tower, the high tower, the name of the map, should be something important for it, and also the idea of symmetry and uh, this unique geometry, symmetrical, and the intertwining itself in a symmetrical way. Those are going to be my four ideas for the creative vision here. So now let's move on to the judgment step, where I call this successful or unsuccessful artwork. And uh, to base my conclusion, my judgment, I will go over the principles of art, which are basically how the elements were used. And so we're going to compare that to the creative vision to see if everything makes sense and fits, if the way the elements of art were used uh, makes sense for the vision, for the what the author had in, had in mind, let's say. So I'm gonna be considering six principles for this art critique. Movement, unity, contrast, emphasis, balance and proportion. Let's begin with movement, because why not? Uh, for movement, First things first, I always must say this, it does not relate to animations. The principle of movement is all about how a work of art can move your eyes around in some sort of path or direction. Arrow signs, I think, is the easiest example of the principle of movement because they naturally move your eyes to where they are pointing to. So, and for this map, let's see, where would I find the principle of movement? I guess a very easy one is already going to be on the rails right of the payload because they are so lengthy and the way that they have been their choice of again shapes and forms but in this time also color and texture of that uh, kind of moves my eyes to see where they are going uh, what else I guess this staircase uh, that uh, accompanies the side of the building on this part and the other one on the other side there is some of that there also and uh, can I even can I see the inside? no, okay, yeah it's mostly there a little bit of it 
Staircases, I think, all of them have a little bit of the principle of movement, but um, you, you, you can find it on a small spot. But I'm going to just try to talk about where I see it more strongly, let's say. Uh, what else? So we have this ramp slash staircases, those ones specifically. The, the, the rails themselves. What else? I mentioned the arrows, yeah, they're, they're there too, there's that. Mm, also here. Anywhere else where I see the principle of movement... Let me see... I just want to look inside the spawn if there could be something there. Te technically a little tiny bit on these like pipes, but very hard to notice, also considering the presentation. In here... yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's mostly what I already said, the strongest ones, let's say. Uh, basically the rails, the... this ramp thing beside the structure in the middle of the map, and the arrow signs. I think that's it. So, does any of that tie to the idea of a map for Team Fortress 2? Well, easily, right? Not only we have the rails, which are intrinsically tied to the payload mechanic of the game mode, also we have the arrow signs that are pointing to the last step of the payload's path, right? The elevators. So... Both of those are tied to the game mechanics of how you win the game, uh, the game rules and mechanics, how you win the game and uh, where you want to go <laughs> to uh, accomplish victory. So yeah, that's working fine. What about the idea of communicating that this is uh, in a desert or something like that? Um, let me see, so none of this that I said. I see it as contributing. Uh, let me. I just want to look at the canyon because I think that could be a good uh, way to do it. Uh, I don't know. I guess there is some of it there. If you look at like the way the canyon goes, I think it kind of moves my eyes a bit. But there is a problem here because I had to go to this very specific spot, the very edge of it, so. This goes so much against the author's presentation. The, except when you die, I guess. But when you die, you ought to not be focusing on the beautiful 3D models around you. You just ought to be thinking of, I don't know, what to, to do next when you respawn. So, um, I'm not gonna be considering the principle of movement was helping do too much. Th thus, this idea of being in a desert. Different, a different critique could, for example, but I won't for this critique. So what about the idea of... Ah, what about the, the tower itself? The high tower. So, okay. We, we, this is the high tower right in the middle of the map. And uh, there is this ramp that goes uh, around it, on both sides of it. And it's an upward ramp and you go inside of the tower and stuff like that. We, we even get out of it at the end of on this platform here, right? So I think it's kind of helping us to to focus on the tower, to look at the tower, and to remember it, to guide, to bring our eyes around the tower in how in a fashion that, that makes us, you know, climb it with our eyes, let's say, or circle it. Either way, in one way or another, I think it is helping with uh, conveying the idea, the memory of this tower. Let's say, convey the memory to imprint the memory of this tower. Like, I don't think this is the most necessarily the strongest, the best way to do it, but I think it's helping. So I would say it is, help, it is helping with the creative vision there. What about, uh, lastly, ah, the idea of symmetry and something in the, and intertwining paths in a symmetrical way, something like that, that ties a lot to the game design of a uh, field race map. Uh, 
well. Naturally, the the rails themselves are the uh, the uh, an intertwining element, a symmetrical element here. And since there is a lot of the principle of movement there, naturally it's very easy for you to notice the symmetry of the map, I think. And the intertwining paths with this kind of... Uh, with the rails, because of how they... because of, you know, because they are so... lengthy and continuous. Our so continuity is helping a lot with that. I think if the rails were like, ah, oh, there's a patch of snow on one part of the rail, or it's it's hidden on the other one, you know, that kind of stuff that would break continuity, I think that could uh, make it harder to come in to showcase uh, symmetry and stuff like that. But they didn't do any of it, so I think it's helping. So, okay, let's move on to the principle of unity now, slash variance. Unity, which is all about how different parts of the artwork can look like they're working together, and varies uh, the opposite, which is the opposite. Uh, you could say ah, how they're not like working together, but you know you can just think of variance as as you would expect, like the number of different things on the map, on the art. And so, but the important part is that both can be used to convey the creative vision. It's just about the how the creator choose, choose, chooses to do it. So let's see. For me, unity on this map, uh, as I sit most strongly on how repeated and continuous the metal plates are. So a lot of the textures and colors, how much it repeats itself. I see a lot of unity there. Um, kind of makes me sad that I, that I didn't interpret this as the part of the creative vision, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know, I guess it doesn't make sense to be sad about that, but anyway. Yeah, uh, warning hazard area. So a lot of unity there. Naturally there is unity on the rails themselves, because there is repetition and patterns of the wooden planks. Again, color and uh, texture, but also, in this case, shapes and forms. Uh, what else for unity? Even the repetition of the payloads, the payload bombs, carts, they are basically two, symmetric, two equal things, right? Just the color that changes. So that's also some unity. Uh, what else? There is repetition on the rocks, and uh, specifically, like they're in a very similar color to the ground. The, the, there's some like I mentioned the ground is being some sh shade of beige, and the rock has some shade of white. They are very similar in color, so it's technically not continuity, but it, uh, proximity. There is proximity in, in those, in this, in the, uh, and also similarity in the colors, I guess. Uh, what else for unity? Um, also on this part, uh, the many similar looking shapes and forms, and color and texture once again. Um, what else? You might notice I'm not talking much about value, because it's kind of all over the place. For example, here there's like this part of the ground that is illuminated, but then this part is, is shadier and uh, you know, it's just following the geometry and ignoring the other elements of art. So it's harder for it to contribute to the principles, I guess, when it's like that. Uh, but I digress. Uh, I also I, I tend to forget about talking about the element of space, uh, but anyway, let's focus on where it was, unity. Not sure, uh, I will try to remember space, but in any case, uh, yeah. Uh, as I was saying, repetition forms shapes colors and textures of this of this canyon here so yeah those are like a bunch of sources of units that i see 
And I might as well talk about variety. I guess the cactus are an interesting source of variety. Not only do they have these like pattern textures and the green color, which is very dissonant from everything else, so perhaps not dissonant, but like different from everything else. They have their unique shapes and forms, very thin ones, not much things on the map with something like that. Uh, and color, color, there's this, that's green, I guess. But yeah. And so the cactus are probably the greatest source of variety that I see here. Also the antennas, <laughs> the satellite di satellite dishes, with some very unique forms and shapes. Uh, very unique, also sources of variety. What else? The rest is, I think in general there is a lot of repetition. I guess the payload bombs also add some variety in comparison to the rest. And the pickups, but uh, I don't know. There is only two bombs. There is only two payload bombs, and the pickups are kind of smaller visually, so you see less of them. It's harder to see them if you're not act actively looking for them. Uh, so anyway, at least that's how I see it. Again, considering the creator's presentation, how we would roughly play on this map, I guess. Uh, as I interpret also because that also... I don't think there's a right or wrong necessarily on that, but anyway. So yeah, that's why I see Unity and Variety. Uh, does any of that help with the idea of a map for Team Fortress 2? Easily, right? I mentioned a lot of Unity on the rails tied to the payload mechanic. Also, there is both Unity on the payloads because there's some repetition on their many shapes, forms, textures, colors. Although the, there is difference on the blue and the red, but all of that uh, easily ties to you know it is Team Fortress 2, it is the payload uh, the, uh, for for the game mode. What else? Uh, so yeah. What about the idea for desert? Again, the sources of variety, the cacti make it easy, right? Because you would expect to see cacti in a desert, and also this like scenery here. With the whole repetition, the whole unity here, I think also helps a lot. And plus the color here on the ground and the, the rocks. I think there are, those are like colors that you would expect from the geography of a desert. Not all deserts, I guess, but um, some kinds of deserts. For example, deserts on the United States, I would say. Like, not the Sahara Desert, basically, but you know. There are more, more than one kind. There is more than one kind of desert. What about the idea of the high tower, the tower itself? Mm, so, I'm not sure. Unity, our variety is helping here, because for Unity, there is like the whole repetition of the metal plates. But there is, they're not exclusive to the tower. They're like on many parts of the. Uh, the both teams sides of the map there's a lot of it on the blue team side but also on some on the red team side so it's and also on that uh, that building over there in the distance so you know that's not helping uh, also you could talk about uh, that's on the unity side of things and when it comes to variety there is little of it and it's funny because technically this is the high tower and this is this is high, you know, uh, for the map. When we play, we realize, oh, this tower is high, <laughs> I would say. But visually, I don't see it as that strongly, the, var the that difference in height, comparing to the other buildings of the map. Because there is a lot of, a lot of other high buildings here. And uh, over there also, even that building over there is not that... Uh, no. Visually, I don't see variety and variety. Or variety. Um, I think like that's in game design because those big buildings, other parts are not uh, not able to, to them. see the unity or help with that idea. So, 
all they do on the map with weapons and stuff. Is there some symmetry in the map? Well, there is. Um, here, the way the, the tracks mirror the, each other, they're symmetrical. So, you know, uh, uh, almost by definition, the is to the great Off the ground and the Also, on the brown and many brown details and uh, the gray parts, and just look at it on the tar, for example, with the, the staircase and the bad windows and stuff. Also, on this other one, the roof, uh, not sure if you should call this a brown color, but it's something like that some kind of a brownish, reddish color. It would be easier to talk about the texture of it, with some rusty texture, but anyway. Uh, yeah, we could also say that on the roofs, they see that the rusty texture of it is also in contrast with the more uh, the wavy and the scraped off textures of the metal plates. Vastness of the space, so this here is open, but you know, there's no some contrast there. The huge and the rest of this are, you know, uh, grounded, let's say, parts. And even on the open particular, with the tighter spaces here, um, when we on other parts of the map. Like this whole open space, and then there's these tighter corridors. I think that could be to me that a uh, sort of contrast. And uh, yeah, yeah, I remember just about the like, down the space. So yeah, those are some strong examples here where I see contrast. Uh, does any of that tie to the idea of a map for Team Fortress Shoe? think not really by themselves the what contrast between the ground and the metal plates on the wall or the metal plates and the wooden brown details the vastness of it uh, and all that open spaces and tight spaces none of that I see as something Iconic for Team Fortress Shoe. I think this, if you just look at this, it could be a, I don't know, a Counter Strike map, maybe. Th there is a lot of other considerations that would perhaps make it weird on a Counter Strike match to look at. But when it comes to the contrast, I don't think the contrast would be a problem. So I don't think see the contrast as helping convey the idea that this is a map for Team Fortress Shoe. What about the idea that this is, a this is in a desert? Ah, okay, so now we can, we are, now we're talking, right? Because if there's some contrast between this metal plates and this beige ground, which again, I believe it it's, uh, ties well to the geography of a desert, you know, the materials of the ground, the color, the lack of vegetation, or I guess yellow, very sparse vegetation. And also, I guess the contrast between the very expensive canyon here and the rest 
Because again, the canyon I think ties well to the geography of some deserts. For example, deserts on the a number of deserts on the United States, I guess. And so, oops. So yeah. Uh, I think all of I think those that contrast is helping convey the idea that you're in a desert. What about uh, conveying? What about the high tower and stuff? Oh well, uh, I, I mentioned it right. Since there is a lot of contrast between brown parts and uh, gray parts, the textures of them. Uh, perhaps even the shapes of it in the farms. You know, because the farm, the, sh the farms are the shapes are a lot of horizontal shapes, and the tower is more vertical. And the farms are mostly a lot of flat platforms, and the tower is like a very tall block for the farms. So, through to to make the the tower more iconic and memorable. So. stuff like that, make this map symmetrical, intertwining, uh, and whatnot. For the stuff that I said, uh, when it comes to the contrast... Uh, I think, like, what I said does not help that much, you know, contrast is between ground and uh, gray parts. And... Uh, Especially being one side of the map. You know, how does that happen? Uh, there is a contrast in the details of the brown and the gray and the textures of uh, the metal plate roof and the platforms. Could, be help, could help. In this case, we're going to this kind of black and not the map. You could see. to get on top of this rock because let's see I think you might already know what I'm thinking here I'm going to try to see the red side and the blue side yeah get rid of this uh, no I screwed up Let's see. So, oops. Ah, okay, there you go. This should be the best spot, roughly, for us to see contrast here. Let's see. Is there some contrast in the blue side? There the, the, on the blue side. So similar to a number of gray parts. So the contrast here, because this is for the symmetry, right? The contrast here is, is there some, I guess. It's just not the strongest one. Um, uh, I, I, I have to adjudicate for this. I'm going to adju adjudicate. Uh, That's gonna be my my choice. And different creative maybe possibly different uh, ideas, but for me the contrast here is not strong enough. If even there necessarily. But anyway, moving on, let's talk about the principle. that keeps your eyes there, stuff like that. Uh, another way to describe it is dominant hierarchy when it comes to uh, art. So, is there points of emphasis or one point of emphasis on this map? Mm, da, 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 da. 
It's probably going to be the tower in the middle, the high tower, as the name of the map suggests. Uh, I would say it's the high tower, and also there's a bit of it on the canyons, especially because I can still see them from a distance. I think they bring some emphasis to them. Uh, we should talk about probably hierarchy, since there is more than one point of emphasis. And uh, so it would probably be for me like the tower in the middle is the greatest source of emphasis, uh, or it's highest on the hierarchy, visual hierarchy, let's say. After that, there is the canyon at the very at the far distance, and then there is the rest of the map, which is all like modeled up between the different parts to me when it comes to visual dominance, emphasis, hierarchy. So, does any of that help with the idea of a map 14 for shoe? Not really, right? They are not exactly tied to the, no the idea. They are just uh, there, you know. There are other games with towers and there are other games with canyons. So, when it comes to a map for Team Fortress 2, I don't see it. What about the idea of a desert? Ah, okay, now it's easy, right? If there is some emphasis on the canyons in the far distance. Um, and as I said before, I think that's a uh, typical geometry for some kinds of deserts, so I think that's helping. What about... now <laughs> this one is going to be the, perhaps the most obvious one, but what about the high tower, the idea of there being a tower that should be iconic on the map? Well, guess what, sport! The emphasis is on the tower, <laughs> so... Obviously working. Contributing to conveying that part of the creative vision. Uh, that one was easy, right? <laughs> so, uh, and finally, what about the idea of symmetry and uh, intertwining paths? Um, for emphasis, I don't see it. Like, the, this intertwining part, I don't see much emphasis or visual hierarchy for it. And even on these parts, which are like uh, the pillars one close to each other, but they are like on the opposite sides of each each uh, each team. So the red payload is gonna be here on the blue side, and the blue payload is gonna be here on the red side. But uh, even then, I don't see that much emphasis because of the size of the payload, I guess, and all the all the visual amount of detail around these parts. Especially basically this thing on the elevator. Honestly, I think if this was a way like simpler design for this elevator part, I think it possibly would be another point of emphasis. But since there's just like so much visual stuff uh, to pull my eyes, uh, I, don't, I don't think I see emphasis here usually on the gameplay. Even though we're not literally looking at the pillow there, but I'm kind of working with what I have for, what I have for memory. Uh, I guess I could technically just uh, disable tournament mode and push both payloads to their spot, but I don't think it's worth it. I think that's just too small of a thing for a little detail that I'm getting into. So it should take something that takes too much time for a little detail that I'm getting into. Anyway, um, so yeah, I don't see emphasis helping with the idea of a symmetry, symmetrical map with intertwining paths. What about... So let's move on then to the next principle of art, which is going to be balance. For balance it's all about like the appearance of some sort of state of equilibrium or tension, something like that. How even or how even or uneven that is, is, does, is there something that looks like spending or going to fall or break? It's that tension that looks like something is going to break. So yeah, let's look for balance here on this map or unbalance because balance is easy right most things here are balanced um, although I do remember like the insides of this part look a bit unstable that looks like to me it's the okay I don't know here this is just like unfinished I guess to me not sure I see balance here now that I look at it. I was expecting to, but to me it's more like unfinished, not exactly unbalanced. Visually, <laughs> visually. <laughs> I gotta be careful with that word when talking about art for games. 
Uh, here, maybe, yeah, maybe there's some tension or imbalance here. With this part, because it looks a bit unsafe, I would say, a bit, uh, I think like, if you, if you break just this small part, the whole thing falls apart, it looks like to me. So I think visually to me there is some imbalance on this part of the map, this, this part of the structure. Uh, what else? But anywhere else, because most parts of the map are just stuff that's balanced, you know, one way or another, visually. Maybe like painting tires <laughs> or something a little bit less visually balanced, but other than stuff like that. Uh, are the satellite dishes balanced? Not even the satellites, yeah. I think it's just that part at the very near the canyon that I see being unbalanced. I forgot to look at the canyons themselves, but I think they are also balanced visually. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything pending, not anything that looks like it's being pushed or pushed, pushed or pulled. So yeah, just here. So does any of that help with the idea of conveying that this is a map 1442? I don't think so. <laughs> This thing is not a red versus blue capture point or anything, and uh, the rest being balanced, I don't think says anything about Infarctus 2, so you know, necessarily about Infarctus 2. Uh, what about the idea of uh, a desert? Mm, this is kind of interesting, because the tension part is close to the canyon. So, you know, is it uh, close enough for the idea? Is it a close enough uh, chain of, ch train of thought, let's say, a short enough train of thought, I don't know, just to look at the um, depending part and how it is on the canyon and stuff, um, and, makes you, and to make that remind you of a desert? Not sure. I think it's a bit too far, conceptually speaking. I think to make the jump, to, to jump through the concept, you know, of oh, this is like a pending structure and we're in the canyon, and canyons can be part of deserts, I think that's a bit too long of a conceptual uh, pathway, let's say. At least for me. So, visually, and again, this is, again, it's some stuff that some different critic could disagree with me. But uh, for this critique, I'm not going to be considering the balance on this part as helping convey that we are in a desert. Although, if I had said something like a canyon, then uh, I would definitely consider this uh, tension here as helping. But for a desert specifically, I think it's a bit too far off. Uh, you have to make a bit too many conceptual jumps, let's say. Uh, correlations, I don't know. So, and finally, what, oh, fuck, not, not finally, sorry, uh, let's, what about the idea of the tower? Again, uh, I don't see any sort of unbalance on the tower. I guess there is this part here, at the side of it, that I hadn't even noticed, but uh, it doesn't even look that unbalanced because of, to me, even though it's like a protuberance, to me, it's kind of like a very stable protuberance, so even that I wouldn't see. If it was, uh, you know, if it was upside down, <laughs> funny enough, I think maybe it would showcase a little bit of uh, unbalance, the visual unbalance there. Uh, but uh, in this way, not even tension, considering how many support uh, parts there are, there isn't it. If there was just like one rope <laughs> holding it, then there, there could be tension. But yeah, the long story short, I don't see balance, the principle of balance helping at all with conveying, with reminding us that there is a tower here and imprinting the tower in our memories visually, stuff like that. I don't see the, the I don't see it, you know. Uh, and naturally that uh, stuff over there has nothing to do with the high tower in the middle of the map. So, and finally, what about the concept of a symmetrical intertwining path um, thing on this map? Again, uh, 
Yeah. Okay, to be fair, there could be symmetry there, right? Let's see. Because I only look at that one side. Is there also the same thing on the other, and does that matter? Uh, yeah, kind of, right? I guess we could have expected it also. Uh, okay. Yeah, there is symmetry on the unbalance. So, uh, hmm. Very interesting. Hmm. Well, I guess as far as conveying a symmetrical map, that kind of helps. That, uh, in other words, like, this structure is like unstable from both sides. So, I think both, if we would destroy this part, uh, the other one maybe would fall down also. <laughs> no, sorry, the other one. Whichever one we could use to make this thing fall apart, I would say, possibly. Uh, I think in a very interesting way, the, so the balance here is helping convey symmetry. <laughs> very interesting. Uh, so yeah, helping with the creative vision. And finally, the last principle of art for me to talk about is the principle of proportion, which is about the different sizes of parts and objects of, in the artwork and their dimensions and how that factors into the creative vision. One thing that I like to do, for example, is to try to place scales into the different parts of the uh, of the art, because I think that's one way to help convey the vision. So in this case, for example, on the greatest scale, I would place the high tower in the middle of the map, but also the other set of buildings. I wonder if I would add a different, uh, even greater scale for the set of buildings. Yeah, actually, I think I would. I think I would uh, group things as like this whole mega structure of buildings as one big thing on the greatest scale of everything. After that, probably the high tower itself. And uh, would I group it, the tower, high tower with this building here? Mm, let me see through a different angle. Uh, They are close in scale, but I think I would separate them. I would place the that building over there on a smaller scale than the tower. Not only considering height, but also overall size. I think I would cons I would uh, cross that path, cross that uh, line. Let's see and uh, consider this as a greater scale than this other building here and so after that also there's the whole canyon here i would probably yeah i'm thinking i would place the canyon and the whole mega structure of buildings as the same scale because that's roughly how i see it and, uh, so those two on the highest on the greatest scale so again, so there are those two, then the high tower itself, then this smaller tower, the shorter tower, I guess. <laughs> the high tower, the shorter tower, then um, probably looking at the rocks. Uh, what else? The rocks. After that, uh, I guess I would group like the cacti the payload itself, the tires, the boxes, like smaller details and uh, after that stuff like the grass and the pickups that, that's how I would group things on based on scale but that's now not the only way to look at proportion because for example the payload, the rails themselves are very lengthy but on just one dimension they are very you know, they're very, are very big on just one dimension. They're extremely lengthy, right? But the other dimensions are very short, so that's why I think grouping is not the only, it's not enough to look at the, the principle of proportion. So, so let's mention the notable proportions here. So as I just said, the payload rails are very notable for their length. Uh, what else? I would also say that the whole set of buildings are notable for their height, 
but the, now including both the mega structure of the buildings and the and the high tower and the that shorter one I think like for their height in, especially in comparison to the other parts to the other teams of the map though they have notable heights to me and uh, finally I guess the use of space here, I was talking about sh shapes and forms, right, for many of this stuff, we're talking about sizes, but here on this space, I also see a very unique proportion, the, I think it's also the length of it, it's pretty unique in the sizes of it, uh, a bit different than the payloads rails for the proportions of it, because the rails are very slim, right? The canyon is also lengthy, but not slim at all. So, but also notable for this, its proportions. So, that's it for the proportions of this map to me, the most notable ones. And does any of that help with the idea of a map 14 for a shoe? Uh, not really, right? Oh no, sorry, sorry, yeah, one of them. The payloads rails, because the rails are again uh, intrinsically tied to the game mode of the payload of the Fortress 2 the payload moves following the rails so the rails being a note having a notable proportion does I think helps convey that also I guess an exclusive proportion because we have like the rails and it, there's only the rails of that kind of proportion right we don't have like some sort of river that follows very similar proportions to the rails so you know for example, uh, what about the idea of a desert? Again, uh, we're looking directly at the canyon this time and how the proportions of it are unique. The, 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 these are the proportions of a canyon after all. And I think that's just looking at the canyon, I think that's close enough to the concept of the desert. Again, I think thinking about the unsafe structure and how that's close to uh, Canyon and how canyons can be tied to desert. I think that's a bit too far, but just looking at the canyon itself, I think works. That's how I see it, at least. Um, I could be wrong, you could disagree, but that's what I'm going to go for for this critique. Uh, okay, so it's helping with that. What about the notion? Um, what about the idea of the high, the high tower, the tower in the middle of it? Is uh, it. Uh, is the proportions helping? They could, right? But uh, no, okay, kind of. When I talk about the height, I think the height are in the middle, share its height with a lot of the buildings around it, and kind of with that one, the distance. But when I just try to look at all the proportions at the same time, I kind of grouped it as its own thing, right? I think the whole mega structure of buildings and the canyon is like one scale above. And the, that other structure there, I, I consider it a scale below, even though they're close, but I think it's they're far enough, let's say. And so I think for the proportions of the high tire, it's uh, also helping with the creative vision. If they made that building the distance a little bit higher, I think it wouldn't anymore. Or a little bit fatter, let's say, I think it wouldn't, uh, the proportions wouldn't contribute. But I would say they measure things really well for this. Uh, that's what I would say. So that's how I see it contributing to the creative vision when it comes to the proportions. And finally, what about the idea of something symmetrical intertwining again the rails? Because the rails have these very unique proportions and they are symmetrical and intertwining, very easily noticeable, very, no very easy to notice it. And it's the proportions that helps us um, see it, I would say, remember it, perhaps. Uh, I think it's helping. So that was it for all the principles, so I can finally pass judgment. Uh, considering everything, for what I remember, at least one idea of the creative vision uh, each, I, sorry, each idea of the creative vision was conveyed uh, with at least one of the principles. So, you know, I think there was no part of the creative vision that was ignored, missing. 
And thus, my conclusion, my judgment is that this is a successful work of art. Congratulations, creators of the High Tower map! I have no idea if it was Valve who made this one or someone from the community, but uh, whoever it was, you, you've done it! You're awesome! Congratulations! And now, whenever you play High Tower, you can uh, remember all of this and appreciate the fact that uh, this is a successful design, uh, at least according to my humble critic. Again, uh, consult uh, multiple critics if you, are, if you want to be sure, let's see. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it for today. Join me for more next time. Uh, bye, YouTube!